Right now on APSU TV, a Hopkinsville officer is shot in the line of duty. What to do with all that expired medicine and long lost art is finally found. Plus local sports, weather and more. APSU TV news starts right now. Good morning, Clarksville, and thanks for joining us. It's Friday, February 22nd. I'm Brandon Crossland. And I'm Victoria Bolcom. A Hopkinsville police officer shot in the line of duty is recovering at home. The Clarksville police chief says bullets hit Officer Jeremy Davidson in the head and arm during a robbery Monday morning. One of the suspected robbers escaped and drove to Clarksville. Police caught up with Kuzak around Highway 4813 and arrested him after a short chase. Kuzak and the three other suspects, Amber Neblett, September Neblett, and Anthony Johnson, face a long list of charges in the case. Well, the Tennessee Valley Authority has opened all 49 dams to prevent potential flooding across the region. Sydney Hawkins has the story. The TVA River Management has been working with different public safety partners throughout the region to prepare for the excessive amount of rain we received earlier this week. Five to six inches of rain were and are still expected to come. Liberty and McGregor Parks have been closed until further notice. TVA has partnered with the National Weather Service to continue to monitor the rain and update the public with forecasts. Sydney Hawkins, APSU TV News. The Clarksville Police Department put together a list of top crash sites in Clarksville. The five major roadways for 2018 crashes are Wilma Rudolph with 1,070 crashes, Fort Campbell Boulevard has 739 crashes, Madison Street is at 544, Warfield is at 480, and Trenton Road has had 430 crashes. These five major crash roadways account for 44% of the total crashes and 38% of the injury crashes in Clarksville. Students in jail receive their high school diplomas through the Inmate High School Equivalency Program. Six students receive their diploma equivalencies and three students receive their diplomas in the mail. The ceremony was attended by family deputies, jail administration, and Judge Katie Olita. The equivalency program allows adults who left high school before graduation to earn their diplomas. Well, President's Day is a day to set aside by Congress to honor the birthday of our first president, George Washington. It's a holiday better known by some for President's Day sales, but a group of Austin Peay students took to the campus on President's Day to exercise the freedom of speech George Washington fought to achieve all those years ago. Tristan Ellis has that story. Show me what democracy looks like! This is what democracy looks like! Several groups, including Campus Democrats and Clarksville Indivisible, held a rally on President's Day, hoping to get their messages out to the campus and Clarksville community. My community! My community! One speaker, Mary Richards, said she spoke out because she feels everyone has a voice and that voice is often heard at the ballot box. In addition to simply voting, a person needs to educate themselves. They need to go beyond just looking at uh, what the candidate says, what they tweet, what they put on Instagram. They need to really try to get to the bottom of what that candidate stands for. Eve Vaughn is a non-binary person who used the rally to speak out against the growing trend she is seeing to discriminate against gay and transgender people. I think that's usually what happens with politics is that there's going to be a very far swing one way and then a very far swing the other. And I think because we had such a liberal legislation, a lot of people freaked out and voted as conservative as they could. And I recognize that there's not much I can do about that as one person except educate people. Richard says activism is an important part of any community and anything you do is better than doing nothing at all. Tristan Ellis for APSU News. You can now safely get rid of those expired or unneeded prescription drugs in the back of your medicine cabinet. APSU's police department is partnering with national agencies in the Prescription Take Back program. This program provides you with the opportunity to dispose of your drugs safely. Officer Human says the closest take back box to campus is located in the lobby of the Shastine building and is available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. 
The Take Back program helps prevent the drugs from reaching children or contaminating waterways. A list of accepted items can be found at the WAPXFM 91.9 Facebook page. Well, our community is very diverse, and APSU's Angela Peterson visited the Wilbur Inn Daniel African American Cultural Center to see how the workplace evolves along with our ever-changing world. On Tuesday, February 19th, the African American Cultural Center held a forum about diversity in the workplace. I got the opportunity to sit in and listen to differing perspectives. Well, we decided to collaborate, and I say we, the Career Services Department and the African American Culture Center during Black History Month just to promote the underrepresented population. But that comes in different forms as far as diversifying the workforce. And as you know, the Office of Career Services, one of our mission and goals is to promote and foster inclusive employment goals. And being able to sustain that is important. So bringing in professionals from the university and corporate America to help kind of bridge that gap to employment. I heard a phrase recently that I loved that said that uh, diversity was being invited to the dance and inclusion was being asked to dance. They also covered topics such as being the only minority within their workplace and why that could potentially be worse than no minority at all. Oftentimes, I felt like I didn't fit in for both reasons. The relatability, nobody looked like me, nobody acted like me, and nobody sounded like me. So because of I had I went from one situation of being not diverse in, into another just by being the only female and then the only African American in the workplace. Sure. This is Angela Peterson, APSU TV News. The Wilbur N. Daniel African American Cultural Center has events that acknowledge Black History Weekly. And for more information, you can go to at WNDAAC on Twitter or apsu.edu forward slash AACC. Chinese New Year's one of the widest celebrated holidays in the world. This week, Austin P got to experience a piece of the Eastern culture. The Chinese Arts Alliance of Nashville visited our school to show off some traditional holiday dances. Megan Stamps joined the Asian Cultural Center to experience the customs firsthand. The Chinese Arts Alliance of Nashville came to celebrate Chinese New Year with Austin P State University. This Monday, CAAP showed some of our students how to start the year of the pig off on the right hoof. Chinese New Year is the most celebrated festival in, in the world, actually. If they have a Chinese heritage, they celebrate Chinese New Year. Just as similar to Christmas, if you make that a comparison. And Chinese New Year is for the family to get together. It's very important. One of Austin P's very own, Professor Chen, works together with Lynn to spread Chinese culture throughout Nashville. Uh, she formed a, a non-profit organization and I like to uh, introduce the <coughs> Chinese culture to Nashville people. And we just joined and try to make her dream come true. When the CAAP reached out to our Asian Studies Club president, Paris Terrell, she was more than thrilled. I just think it's a lot of fun, and um, I learned a whole bunch of things about Chinese culture that I didn't know otherwise through the dance troupe, like um, them teaching me how to dance certain ways I've never done before, because I, I don't usually dance. Oh yeah, definitely get involved, because uh, there's lots of things you can learn, and um, but when you learn about different cultures, it like, opens up different doors for you. Um, in that way. You can join the Asian Studies Club in Nashville at the Japanese Cherry Blossom Celebration this April. Find out how to join the Asian Studies Club on the Austin P website and visit www.chineseartsalliance.org to learn more about the CAAP. The Asian Studies Club meets once a week and would love to have you there. Also, if you have a special place in your heart for Chinese gourmet, you can join the CAAP May 4th for their Chinese dining adventure event. Register online for more details. Authorities say a man was killed in Tennessee after part of a road washed away due to heavy rain. According to Highway Patrol, it happened early Thursday morning on State Route 70. CNN's Christy Calcagno has the latest. Maybe we shouldn't be back in here because, I mean, you know, we're right up on where the accident had happened. 
at any moment there may be more, you know. There was enough mud and debris moving to decimate the road and push two vehicles 200 feet down a hillside, the likes of which emergency officials here haven't seen before. But the worst I've seen in my 41 years of emergency services here, but it's the side of the mountain is gone. Highway 70 now closed until further notice. A detour is in place and three families were evacuated as a precaution. Rescue crews responded to the initial reports of fallen trees in the road. Then came state highway engineers and multiple fire departments even from Kingsport. But anytime we do something like this, there is an element of danger. And we have a lot of redundancies uh, and a lot of different things that we use to make sure our people are safe. Well, hey, Paula, looks like there's more <laughs> rain to come. Yeah, I think we need to tell John Fogarty that, yes, we have indeed seen the rain. It's time for it to, to pass on. Uh, let's head over to <laughs> Emily Walden for more on the weather. Emily? Thanks, Brandon. So let's first take a look at our national temps. So we're going to start over here on the East Coast. New York is at 42. Atlanta's at 60. Chicago's at 33. Dallas is at 50. Denver's at 28. Seattle is at 39. And Los Angeles is at 59. Now let's take a look at our today's highs in Tennessee. Clarksville is at 50. <laughs> Uh, Nashville is at 51, Chattanooga is at 53, and up here in Knoxville is 51, and Memphis is at 53. Today's lows, Clarksville is at 48, Nashville is at 49, Memphis is at 52, Chattanooga is at 51, and Knoxville is at 59, 49. And our current temperature is 47 degrees with uh, weather at 10 miles per hour. And tonight's temperature is going to be a 48 degrees with 8 miles per hour and 90% chance of rain. And our five-day forecast on Friday today, the high is 50, low is 49. Saturday is a high of 67, low of 44 with thunderstorms. Sunday is partly cloudy with a high of 53 and low of 29. And Monday is partly cloudy as well with a high of 52 and low of 32. And Tuesday is partly cloudy, high 59 low 36. So let's head over back to still ahead several hurt in bull game and Hunter Sanders and Bryce Bimmett with APSU Sports. Welcome back. If you think standing in the middle of a ring trying to grab $100 bills off bull's horn sounds like a good idea, you're wrong. <laughs> but a group of people did just that Saturday night. The game is called Cowboy Pinball. Players must stay within a circle drawn on the ground in a rodeo pen and trying to snatch a $100 bill from between a bull's horns. And it started out innocently enough Saturday night in Owensboro. Up until they let the second bull out, it was pretty normal, you know. Just a big old bull out there that's kind of scaring people, but not really out to get anybody. But the second bull was another story. Was ready to go after somebody, he was going to get them. And so when they let him in with the guy, the people, the general public in the pinball game, I was like, oh my lord, why would they do that? That's such a bad judgment call. The Owensboro Convention Center manages the sports center. Officials say they had no idea this game would be included in the bull bash, and it wasn't used last year at the event either. We didn't have any knowledge about it until it was announced over the speakers. Obviously, if we had known, we would have um, pulled it immediately. Every contestant signed a waiver before entering the pin, and after the run-in with the bad bull are recovering from scrapes, bruises, broken ribs, and torn ligaments. But some of the spectators who were there say they can't get the image out of their head. He had his head down, and he did not stop at the people. He went through them. He, he, there was no, he didn't slow down at all. He just plowed. In Owensboro, Katie Capusta, 14 News. Let's head over now to Hunter Sanders and Bryce Beeman for a look at your Gov Sports update. Thanks, Brandon. Over the past two days, the Governor Track and Field team has been competing in Cape Girardeau, Missouri at the Indoor OB Championships. 
On Wednesday, Lennox Walker led the charge for the Govs, earning three points with a sixth place finish in the long jump. On Thursdays, the governors shine even brighter as senior Savannah Motto surprised no one with her sixth consecutive OVC title, as well as teammate Dacia Hicks claiming the runner-up position. The governors took fifth place as a team and will begin their outdoor season March 8th in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Baseball is back at the P. The Govs had their home opener last weekend against the University of Kentucky. Battling some tough, rainy weather, the Govs ended up losing all three games. In the second game, Austin Peay's designated hitter Andrew Flaherty had his third career home run. Starting pitchers for each game include senior Jacques Pichu, lefty pitcher Brett Newberg, and redshirt senior Josh Rye. The Govs will play at home this weekend in the Mule Mix Classic. The Govs game today was canceled, but will play Saturday and Sunday at 1 p.m. On the softball field, the Governors are in full swing. The team is 5-5 five five so far in the year, with two of those losses coming to a top 15 University of Louisiana team. The Governors played five games in Louisiana last weekend and have returned this weekend to take on McNeese State in a three-game series. Following that, they will be headed to Beaumont, Texas to take on Lamar University. Carly Matson has been leading the offensive charge for the Govs with a 448 average, 13 hits, and 10 RBIs. The Austin Peay women's basketball team won an exciting 56-54 win over Southeast Missouri. The Govs started off cold in the first half, only shooting 19% from the field. The game continued to be back and forth, but Austin Peay was able to pull out an exciting win. Ariel Gonzalez-Varner led for APSU with 13 points and 9 rebounds. Austin Peay will play their last home game of the season tomorrow at 1.30 against UT Martin. The game is also available to watch on ESPN+. The women's tennis team here remains the only team to be unbeaten. The Lady Govs possess three of the top four players in the conference, all of whom are undefeated in singles play. The Lady Govs' next match will be at Kennesaw State on March 2nd. The Austin men's basketball team recently beat SEMO as well, 83-70 last night in the Dunn Center. With remarkable second-half defense, the Govs were able to pull away from SEMO. Austin B had 20 offensive rebounds, which is the second-highest total so far this season. The Govs also shared the wealth with four players in double digits. Austin P is still tied for second in the OVC standings, but will play their last home game for the season in the Dunn Center tomorrow after the women's basketball game against UT Martin. The guys will be celebrating senior night, so come out and support. That's all for sports. Still ahead, art and design students find local long-lost art, and Clarksville police deal with furry escapees. APSU TV News will be right back. Austin Peay's Art and Design Department with the support of the APSU Center of Excellence for the Creative Arts welcomed graphic designer Gail Anderson to campus. Anderson won the Cooper Hewitt Smithsonian 2018 Lifetime Achievement Award. Her free lecture took place at the Art and Design Building Room 120 at 6 p.m. She lectured on art directions and answered students' questions. Anderson will also be holding creative workshops for the graphic design students. Well, communication and theater departments are teaming up once again next Monday evening at 6.30 for a panel discussing diversity in dance and ballet. The event is called I Am a Black Dancer. The panel will be followed by a screening of Misty Copeland's film, A Ballerina's Tale. For more information, you can contact Jessica Morris at 931-221-6824. Light refreshments will be provided. APSU's Women and Gender Studies program and the Feminist Majority Leadership Alliance are hosting the 18th Annual Vagina Monologues. You can see this award-winning play at 7 p.m. tonight in the Clement Auditorium. The play is part of the International V-Day campaign, which aims to raise awareness about violence against women and girls. Locally, the play raises money for Clarksville Sexual Assault Center and the Legal Aid Society of Middle Tennessee. All proceeds will go to these centers. Two long-lost pieces of art were recently discovered in Austin Peay's art department. Junior Catherine Tolson found two separate pieces from a French artist named Alphonse Legros held within the permanent collection. And a photo of Winston Churchill taken by American photographer Felipe Halsman was also discovered by Austin Peay freshman Sarah Potter. Tolson and Potter will both be able to share their show their, their showcase their, to showcase their findings at the 2019 Southeastern College Art Conference coming this fall. 
Four audacious dogs escaped from their wooden privacy fence on Tamara Lane and roamed the streets of Hazelwood and Heather here in Clarksville, Tennessee. Officer Tim Green with the Clarksville Police Department arrived to capture these pups. After arriving, one dog willingly jumped in the back seat of the patrol car after Officer Green opened the door, while the other three dogs were being more difficult. Officer Green returned to the dogs, to their homes, and to their owners who were out looking for them after their escape. Firefighters came to the rescue of a family dog that found itself in a tricky spot with spare time. Jeremy Roth has today's Take a Look at This. Southern California dog is on the mend after authorities had to help him out of a sticky situation. 11-month-old Bam Bam's owners found him in their yard with his head stuck in this spare tire. Bam Bam. They say they have no idea how it happened, and after trying to free the dog, they brought him to an animal hospital. The vets there called in Orange County firefighters who were able to cut Bam Bam loose. The whole thing left the pooch dog tired. See what I did there? But it's his owners who are feeling the burn. The incident racked up a veterinary bill of over $2,000. That's our Bam Bam. Bam! A trooper is recovering after a suspected drunk driver smashed into his cruiser, narrowly missing him. The trooper had just finished a traffic stop in Las Vegas when it happened. You're good to go. Drive safe. Dash and body cameras were rolling as it unfolded. The vehicle failed to move over, colliding with the cruiser and barely missing the trooper. The official sustained only minor injuries and the vehicle's driver was booked on DUI charges. Nevada Highway Patrol shared the video along with these images as a reminder of the dangers of drunk driving. But take a look at this. I'm Jeremy Roth. All right, so spring break's coming up. Any plans? I'm going camping. Ooh, camping. that's kind of fun. I'm going home for the weekend. I might get a new car. Oh. And then my next weekend, I think I'm just going to go to spend like the weekend in Nashville and stuff. But I work during the week, so I can't really go anywhere. Uh, yeah. I'll be heading home have, and um, Saturday... Don't forget, one of the last doubleheaders for basketball. Yes. I will be there, yeah. for sure. I'm at every game. What about you guys? You guys planning on going? I'm planning on sleeping. I'm, headed home. I'm headed home this weekend. Oh, really? So, yeah, okay. I'll, yeah. So multiple times going back home. Yeah, it's senior night, though, so that'll be interesting. There's several seniors graduating and some big names, too. Oh, no. With Austin P Basketball, but it'll be good. We still have some young yeah. players that are doing great still for Austin P Basketball. That's yeah. good. So. Well, do you think the rain will ever stop? I mean, we. Oh man. <laughs> it's it's been crazy. I'm like, thinking about getting a boat personally. I can get, yeah. a boat, get my oranges. Yeah. Like, you all might right, need guys. one with uh, all the flooding that's about to happen. You yeah. might need a boat. Kind of worried about heading home because my my hometown is in that uh, danger area. That's oh, like no. That, no. like the most of it, and like. My little brother's still been out of school multiple days for flooding. Oh, yeah. Because all the back roads are just messed up. You all think we're going to get out of school for that? No. I think I Mo know. Montgomery no. County I think was the only one that <laughs> didn't, didn't do anything for letting out of school. Let's just hope yeah. we don't repeat May 2010 because that was awful. Wait, I, I don't know what happened. What? Okay. In May 2010, Nashville. we had the most flooding. Nashville 2010. Wow. Nashville that was I'm not from here, so. Oh, that, that was I'm a big from one. Memphis, and it was bad even there. There wow. were some places yeah. where it was just up to the mm -hmm. signage in front of the YMCA in Millington. Wow. I, I did get out for school for that. I remember we uh, yeah. got out of school because it was just so bad and had That's to get crazy. someone to pick me up because my mom was at work. I, I, have crazy. Footage, I, have footage, I took footage of our front yard because I was like doing my own little show before Aww. YouTube kind of thing. <laughs> Look at our front yard, it's crazy. And like my little brother was into mowing the yard and like all he wanted to do was still mow the yard. I was like, what do you want to do? Like, That's mow funny. Mow yard. The audience can't do the yard. But. <laughs> That's all we have for this edition of your Govs News Weekend Update. Be sure to join us in the interaction by liking us on Facebook at APSU TV Clarksville and Instagram at APSU underscore TV. Thanks for watching another edition of your Govs News Weekend Update. Have a good weekend. And as always, let's go, go Pee! pee.